Hey everyone! So it's drawing to the end of summer, which I'm sad about, but I'm trying very hard to get in all of the beautiful golden tea dyeing I can before I don't have it anymore. Um, during the winter, I always have to put it in the garage, and to me, it just doesn't give the beautiful golden color that having it during the summer does. But in this video, I want to walk you through how I do my tea dyeing and maybe you'll get some tips and tricks that you don't already use or maybe you've never tea dyed before so this is a new process or maybe you want to tea dye and just aren't sure how to go about it so or maybe you've done this for years and you're going to be like woman that's the worst process I've ever seen in my life I'm not sure but I wanted to share it with you like I said I'm about to run out of beautiful summer days, so I wanted to go ahead and post this. Um, I do want to say up front, I'm very sorry for the lighting because I have never filmed outside before, so I didn't realize I'm horrible at it, and so, you know, a lot of times you can see my whole camera stand because I've set the, the camera where the sun is behind it, and it, it's it's not good, but I I beg you to please focus on what I'm trying to show you, and not how bad the recording and the cameraman is okay or camera woman and so at the end of the video i'm going to walk you through some of the outcomes of all of it and some of the ones i'm really tickled about and i'm even going to show you some that i was very very disappointed in but it's not like we can't fix it we can always dye it again or you know whatnot don't worry i'm not going to take you through this whole basket this is a lot I had, I do linens and paper and doilies and different kinds of paper. I'm going to use wax paper, braille paper. I even did some guest checks, which did not turn out good this time. And I'm not really sure why. They're the same ones I've used before. I dyed them just like I always have. And for some reason, they're just not very dark this time. So either I'm going to keep them for myself and use them for giveaway items or you know I don't know but anyway let me show you my process and then we'll come back and I'll show you how everything turned out so I use the same process if I'm using paper linens fabric whatever I'm using I do this same process and I use this same bowl this is a Pyrex bowl I think it's eight cups holds eight cups and I probably put five to six cups in it that part doesn't matter because I will add more water later. This is just to steep my tea bags. And I only have five tea bags left, so I'm just going to use them all. Normally I do four to six. And these are family size tea bags. And I will put this in the microwave for anywhere seven to ten minutes, however much time you have. And then I let it steep. I leave it in the microwave for probably anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. This time I'll probably do it for about 10 minutes. I'll take it outside and let it steep in the sun, add some of the older tea bags to it that I've used before, and I'll take it outside, I'll add some of the older tea bags to it that I've used before. I'll add those in when I take it outside and I'll just let it set in the sun for probably another 20 minutes to let it steep and bring out that golden color. And then I'll add it to my basting pan, which I'll show you with some more water. Okay, I am no idea if I'm actually in screen because it's very bright out here, but I'm showing you, this is my basting pan that I use. And in it, I have filled it with probably about an inch of hot water. And here is my bowl after I microwaved it. All I'm going to do is let it seep in the, steep in the sun for a little bit. These are just fabric that I want to tea dye. It, not sure how the videos are going to go up, but it's the same fabric that I use to use the watercolor and the distress inks on. It's kind of a, I don't know, I said before, a toss between a muslin and a linen. It almost makes me think of Oh, do you remember those? You have to be old my age to get this, but they used to make jackets 
and it kind of reminds me like men had kind of a little lightweight jacket they called it something like a muskrat or they had pants too muskrat pants that can't be right there's no such thing as a muskrat pant seer sepper sucker seer sucker i don't know if i think if i find it i'll put it on the screen but it's kind of that reminds me of that kind of material and there's no reason i have it in the water other than i just didn't want to carry it separately but i am going to tea dye it as well and i've added the extra water so that when this steeps it's going to get really really dark i'm going to add some of the old bags to it that i've used in previous tea dyes as long as they're not busted i use them again just let them set out here in the sun for probably another 20 minutes or so to get that bright color or get that golden color and then I'll pour it into my water actually I guess I could go ahead and pour it into my water and let that steep for a while that way my tea bags will have more room to float about and then after about 30 minutes I'll come back and we'll take the muslin out what I'm going to call it because I don't think it's called muskrat pants and I'll gather up my papers in the meantime and some stencils. I call them stencils. They're actually plastic placemats. So I'm going to go ahead and take these tea bags out, squeeze them a little bit, trying not to bust them. I went ahead earlier after about 10 minutes of sitting in the solution and took out the, it's called seersucker and the material I was trying to think of and it is nothing like what I was using nothing at all but just for the record it's seersucker not muskrat and when I took that out I put in some wax paper because I think it's going to be fun to stamp on it make markings on it once it has that tea dye color I'm trying not to bust them so I can use them again So this is the wax paper that I put in earlier, and I'm just going to pull it up like this and let it drain a second. I'm not going to take each one. I'm just going to let them dry together, lay them there flat. I've got some different papers here. Got some Braille. Just going to put that in there. And I love using this lined paper. I love this rough edge. And I'm not going to separate these because, as you'll see later on, I do let some of the juice run in between the papers. But as it sits out here and soaks, it will get a bunch of it in between the layers. And plus, it gives it a really cool look when the inside isn't all tea dyed too. It's just a really nice look. So I'm going to do it like that. And I'm going to lay the front and back covers in here just to kind of weight it down a little bit. Plus, I've done this before and it gives that cardstock a really pretty deep color. You can use it on the back of tags or anything. So you can use the whole thing. And then you can also use this for making charms, beads, dangles. So I'll keep that too. Nothing goes to waste. And then I've got a bunch of my placemats and stencils out here. That when I take this out, we'll lay on the top of some of them. And I kind of rotate them as they dry so that others get the same marking. Because I like to lay them in piles. I don't have a lot of room. So I'm going to let this sit for probably about 10 minutes. And then I'll come bring them out. Okay, so these have been in here for probably about 20 minutes. And I've got some good pooling on the top. Really cool markings for these pieces of the front and back of the notebook put that there and then I think I found some more of my stencils also found some bubble wrap that leaves a really cool impression I think just for kicks I'm gonna lay one of these on top of the wax paper just to see if it'll take if it'll show it may not and then I'm gonna lay some of this paper on top because that will seep through and if it will leave an impression 
the extra wet will help that. I don't know how to word that to, for it to make sense because I'm sure that didn't. So let me move my stencils out of the way and I'm just going to lay these papers out in piles. Like I said, I'm not going to separate them till they start getting a little drier. This is going to be cool because it's got some blue left on it from when I watercolored some papers. So I'll get some good markings on that. I'm going to keep doing this with all my papers. Okay, it's the next day now, and I'm going through the same process, squeezing out my tea bags, that kind of thing. I'm going to be doing doilies and linens today. And I've washed them, so they're a little, I didn't dry them, they're still damp. I was thinking if they were wet, maybe that would open up the fibers where it would help absorb the tea more. So I'm just going to finish taking out these tea bags, and then I'm going to start dipping in the doilies. I want to start with the doilies. I'm just going to dip them in. I've got doilies, some crocheted pieces, and they all have marks on them. So some of them, even though I wash these, they're still kind of grungy. So I'm just going to throw them in there, let them soak up a little bit of water. So I'm just going to put those in there like so and let them set for a few minutes. So I have some rust water here too, and I'm just going to spray some of these with it. But I'm going to bring these out now and just lay them flat in the sun, squeeze them a little bit, and lay them as flat as I can. I'm just going to keep squeezing them out, laying them flat, and moving things around on my table because I don't have a lot of room. I might lay some on top of each other just to see if they maybe give a pattern. Who knows? A few more bigger pieces. I have a long table runner here. A couple of those, but put in some pillowcases because I'll probably tear those. Now I'm going to take these doilies, I have a couple doilies here, that I'm going to spray with rust water. The one on the bottom is, mo is linen, there's no yarn in it, and the one on the top is just yarn. And as you can tell, it looks kind of a brown rust, but it, turn it will turn darker. And then this long piece, I'm going to do half in the tea solution and half I'm going to spray with rust water. I decided on the pillowcase, I'm going to actually cut it, try to, while it's in the dyeing process where maybe the edges will get a nice golden color like maybe it's been inked. And here we are with the results. I'm really, really happy with some of, most of my fabrics. This is so beautiful. And the sad thing is I know that my lighting is not going to show just how beautiful it is. This might be better. You can see. The dark in it right now isn't that beautiful if you're into the grungy and this was a yard of this kind of fabric and what I see myself doing is cutting some of these to use for pockets maybe strips for paper edge ruffles I think the doilies turned out beautiful really golden very pretty very grungy just like I like look at this one oh gosh and so the ones that this one had one laying on it. I mentioned in the video I was going to lay something on it. Another one to see if it would pull the design, the pattern of the one above. And it does somewhat. I think it looks really good. This one turned out really grungy. Ooh. This one had one laying on it. You can kind of see some of the pattern from the one laying on it. I won't show them all to you and bore you, but I did want to show you on the one that I did half tea and half rust water. I like it, but my hope was to cut some of these little things where they're complete, you know, little 
doilies and put them in my shop. And I don't think the ones with the rust anyone would like because it really just looks dirty. I mean, I know that it's rust water and it's not dirty, but I don't know. I don't think that's going to be something that people will like. This one was rust water and it just looks... I don't know. Not that pretty. Look. And I did go ahead and put it in tea water later. And it, I don't know. I may end up having to wash it and see if I can get some of that out. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I love it. But at the, I mean, you know, I don't really know. Short of putting it on a cover, a very grungy cover. Not really sure how you'd use it. I just really liked how these turned out. They're so grungy and so pretty. This was the blue. See, this would make a great piece. You could cut this whole piece and make one, one whole doily. Oh, and this is the big piece of linen that I used rust water on. And again, it just looks very dark and what's strange is I've used the rust water on I guess it just depends on the fibers but I know I've used it on linen I'm sorry muslin before and cheesecloth and it it gave a beautiful rusty color but this just turned dirty looking and again I don't think that's probably something that anybody's going to find interest in this one, I'm not sure. Yeah, you can tell. It's not as red as it's showing up on camera. It's more of a a deeper red, and this is more of a forest green. But I thought, wouldn't this be beautiful for a Christmas journal? I love it. I really like how this one turned out. I can't wait to use it. Anyway, so that's some of the linens. Oh, and I wanted to show you this. This is not one I done on camera, but see how dark and rich it is? This is one that I've used as like a stencil on my papers pretty much all summer and part of last winter. And just from doing it over and over and over, look how dark and beautiful those little pieces are. I love those. So that is how the linens turned out. I won't, like I said, I won't bore you with all of them. I just wanted to show you some of my favorites and some of my fails. <laughs> And I'll put this away. I'm going to put this up and we're going to look at the paper. Oh, I wanted to show you the pillowcase that I dyed too and tore it into strips. It didn't take the tea dye quite as good as I hoped it would. I mean, you can certainly tell the difference. Here, here's just some white fabric and you can tell the difference in the tea dye and the not dye. So, but I mean, looking at it on its own, it just doesn't look that dark to me. And I was hoping it would be a little more golden, but I think it still turned out pretty. And I think that, you know, tearing these little flowers or stamping on the part that doesn't have anything is going to be perfect to use in journals. Okay, and here's some of my papers. Oh, here's a few more little doilies. Aren't they cute? Just love them. I did use this stencil these two stencils on some paper and that turned out really good. I'll see if I can find them through here. Well, I will point them out when we get to them. How about that? So for the most part, this one is beautiful. And then of course the ghost printing of the stencils. I love that too, because this one would have been one that maybe was laying behind the other one. So it doesn't have as much of a stencil, but you can still see it. And look how golden how beautiful. I hope this is. It's really, really a pretty golden color. Flip through here. And I love how it does the edges. The edges always look so dark and pretty. And I even like the ones that there wasn't anything laying on. But it gave it like the water droplets. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having trouble getting it to show just how pretty it is. There's one that had a placemat on it. Another one.
Oh, this one's a pretty one. Had a pretty placemat on it. And here is the ghost print from behind that one. See it? Isn't that pretty? And then this is the third piece. You can still see some of it behind it. I like how that... And this one, with the lines, this is from my basting pan. It was laying on the bottom. And, you know, I let them soak. And it left the marks. I thought that was neat. I thought it would be cool. Like a page in your journal, you would... You know, some people like to write on lines. Some of these are just so golden. So pretty. There's another one with the ghost print of the stencil. Must have been another one that was laying in the bottom of the pan. And that one. Or it was pulling like the same as a ghost print. Look how pretty this is. I think this one, I just had a doily that wasn't quite, quite dry. So I like just laid it on this one. And it gave all of this marbling effect. I thought it was really pretty. Oh gosh, look how golden this one is. Isn't that pretty? Almost looks like it's coffee dyed. Love the water markings. Oh, here is the one, one of them, that I laid the stencil of the writing on. This one. That's not the best one, though. There's a one that I did on notebook paper, and it turned out really, really good. This one is the one I laid the bubble wrap on, and so it gave kind of the impressions of the circles. There's more bubble wrap. And this is my favorite thing now to tea dye, and this is the wax paper. Look. How beautiful and golden it is. Isn't that going to be fun to stamp things on and put as a page in your journal? Oh, I love it so much. They really, really took the color. I hope you can see it because they are very, very golden. Very pretty. And, you know, not to mention the wonderful sound. This is the back of my guest checks. And I always do it, too, because it does give it kind of a richer color, even though, you know, it's cardstock, so it isn't like it shows up a lot. It just gives it more of a toasty color. And I like to use these as backings for little notepads for my guest checks. But see, these just didn't turn out really golden. They have markings, and you can tell that they've been tea dyed, but they're not as grungy and dark as I was hoping for. So that one... To me was a fail and I did let them soak for quite a while um, because they were one of the last things that I dipped so I really thought they would be darker and they that's what I got and here is the back to my spiral notebook that I pulled out look isn't that cool all of those markings I'm sorry it's not the back it's the front but this will be good to use as the back for some notepads this was one of my favorite stencils. It's actually flowers, but the way that it done it, kind of in spots looks like a spider web. I guess you could, I could use it in a Halloween journal. Oh, this is a pretty one. Look at that. Very pretty. And this is the braille paper. Isn't it beautiful? And look how it did on the edges. So, so pretty. This one I did lay a stencil on. I'm calling them stencils, but please know they're, they're the placemats. I don't actually have stencils large enough for this. And it's probably not showing up, but on the braille, on the raised bits, it's a little bit darker. and Oh, it's so, so beautiful. This one had a stencil laying on the edge. It almost looks like a picture frame because it went all the way. I must have had it laying in the middle of something, but I love how that turned out. Even on the side that has the little holes. I thought that was beautiful. 
Here's another one. Same deal. It kind of looks like a picture frame. Love the markings on the Braille. And this is part of the notepad or the spiral notebook. And this was a huge disappointment. These I just put in piles in my water. And always before, I know you don't believe me, but I would leave them for however long, 20, 30 minutes to an hour. And these pages in here would become at least tea dyed around the edges, looking like you had inked it. Didn't happen this time. And I say I'd done everything the same. I obviously didn't or it would have worked. Something I did different. But let me show you a prior tea, tea dye. And this is, now it is a different kind of paper. I mean a different brand, but it's still the spiral. And I don't know if you can see it, but I laid these in there. See that, that pretty golden isn't wanting to show. But I laid these in there in a big stack. And it soaked all the way into the metal. And these are beautiful golden brown. Again, I'm sure it's not showing up in my camera, but they really, really are pretty golden brown. So, sometimes, I, you know, that's actually the part I like about tea dyeing. You just you never know what you're going to get. I, uh, with my process, because I'm not specific, I don't do, you know, one sheet of paper and lay it down with a stencil and you know then you pretty much know what you're going to get the way i do it in stacks who knows who knows what i'm going to get and i like it because i like ooh, i love all the grungy i like the surprise of when i remove those stencils what's going to be underneath now this surprise wasn't the best that's totally white let me hold one of these up to the other batch and see if you can tell that way. Yeah, now you can see. See the difference? These were done the same. I just pulled them off in a pile, put them in the tea water, and let them soak. I didn't individually dip them. And you can tell how much prettier these are than these. So I'm not sure what I did different, but here's the back of my spiral notebook. Didn't it? Doesn't it have beautiful marks? That would just, that's just going to make the best. Oh, here is the best notepads. I'm sorry I don't finish my sentences. I have noticed that in my videos, and I have to do a lot of editing where I just started a statement and then I went on to something else and I never finished it. So I'm really sorry. That's kind of how my thought train works. I, as soon as something new jumps in my head, I have to blurt it out or I'm going to lose that one too. So here is this kind of script stencil on the notebook one. Doesn't it look cool? So pretty. I really liked how that one turned out. Not the 14 wide underneath it. Oh, and here is the bubbles. This would have been good to have on my ocean journal with the water color, using the watercolors on that. Wouldn't that have been pretty? Not like I still can't do it. I haven't finished that journal, but... And then just some random ones that are probably not showing how pretty they are. I guess if I held it to something white the whole time, you would definitely be able to tell how pretty they are. Very pretty. So I hope you enjoyed this and maybe got some ideas of how you're going to tea dye or maybe even if you're an experienced tea dyer. You might have learned just a trick or two that maybe wasn't so bad. I don't know. Or maybe you learned, okay, I'm sure we're not going to do it that way. <laughs> when I first started tea dyeing, it to me was kind of um, intimidating. I wasn't sure, you know, I didn't want to mess up a whole bunch of paper and I didn't want to mold a whole bunch of things. So I hope this made it a lot simpler to understand. You know, anybody can do it. Obviously, I did. I hope that you'll, if you have sunshine all year round or you have some more sunshine days left in the summer, we have a few more. So trust me, I'm going to be working every one of them too. Or trying to. I say that. I I haven't for a few days. But I'm going to I'm gonna make more because I like to get a stock 
or winter. I know last year I made a whole bunch of things and I thought, wow, I won't use these in my lifetime. And I did. I ran completely out of tea dyed paper. I'm thinking of making a journal with only tea dyed papers because there's so many different shades. And I just think, you know, if you want a writing journal, what better thing to write on? I mean, it's beautiful. Oh, and that wax paper. You have to try the wax paper. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time, guys. Bye.